fire, fire, fire. Balloon. Balloon. Pop in the mini. Yes, Pop strong the mini. woman. Yes, pop on. Yes, pop on. Gang, 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 gang. Yes, 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 yes. Gang, 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 gang. Balloon. 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 Chili pepper. Spicy. I don't know if you know this, but listen loud and clear. None of your content creators, your favorite ones, including me, are your friends. There are multiple paradoxes that plague our times. The strangest of which is the rise of the loneliest generation at a time when the earth is most crowded. The human brain, like mycelium, craves for connections. That's how we grow, that's how we learn, and that's how we survive as a civilization. But what happens when there is nothing physical or tangible to hold on to, grow from or grow with? A whole bunch of people, almost like me, who dislike going out and interacting with people in person, end up spending an unhealthy amount of time online in search for the same. We start to confuse the virtual for real and the lines of reality starts to blur at a rapid pace, as is visibly obvious from the sudden and violent upturn of the most toxic and addicting fandoms online and with them the rise and rise of parasocial relationships. In today's world of constant connection, social media has changed the way we interact. One interesting yet concerning development is the rise of one-sided online friendships. These are connections where people feel close to online personalities even though the feeling isn't mutual. It's like having a best friend who's never heard of you. Don't get me wrong, toxic fandom is not a new phenomenon. We have always, as fans, been possessive of the celebrities that we deem worthy over others. This goes from movies to sports, to politics or to musicians. This is a common behavior, however problematic. It is who we have always been, hero, celebrity, worshippers. But in the past, if you were a fan of a celebrity, all you could do is follow their body of work or read about them in the papers or monthly magazines. At some point, you could even write them a snail mail or want to meet them in person, in a public setting, during events. But that's where the spiral ended. This is not the case in the forever online world of social media, where one can literally obsess over one's idol 24-7, if you're so pleased. Fandoms are also a way to connect to strangers and build your personality around it. But the monetization of fandom has turned something innocent and nice into a toxic obsession. There is content created to keep fans hooked on an industrial level, to a point where one starts feeling as if they are a part of a hive mind, which is made worse by the fact that in an online world there is now an actual chance that if you keep at it, if you make a big splash, if you donate a large amount, your celebrity idol might actually notice you and communicate directly with you in the presence of million other fans prompting them to do the same and round and round and goes to become a subscription-based relationship. Fandoms as consumerism traps and marketing companies have figured this out. They have started monetizing this wave of parasocial relationships. Today, when your favorite content creator live streams, you can send a super chat or donate to their stream for them to take notice of you, say your name or read your question. For the streamer, it's just another day's job, where they come talking to a camera and do their thing. You're just another pop-up on their screen that they need to go through. But for the fan, it is a huge moment of elation, being recognized, being acknowledged. In the past, if you saw someone eat or sing or disrobe or respond to you, you needed to be in their close proximity. That implies closeness to our brain. But we can all do all of those things virtually today. Actually, much, much more. We can pay our way into gaining their attention. We can pay our way into their Discord chat rooms. We can even pay for someone to perform adult-oriented ads for us on screen. In real life, 
all of these gratifications communications and insights were gained purely through personal or private interactions our brains haven't yet adapted to cope with the sudden change in personal or parasocial connections as mentioned before this blurs the lines between real and imagined you might think your favorite content creator or celebrity about whom you know everything but they don't even know you exist making this a one sided or a parasocial relationship while most fans are well meaning there are instances where things take a darker turn just ask popular streamer pokemon who's had her fair share of scares regarding disillusioned fans who clearly had developed unhealthy parasocial obsessions these extreme cases highlight the need to distinguish between genuine appreciation and being a stan it is important to remember that boundaries exist for a reason this is also an environment that breeds scammers looking to make a quick buck off the unassuming audience accused sex trafficker and woman abuser andrew tate's rise to internet infamy is one such case his fame was fueled by millions of incel men looking to be a part of the manosphere tate now in a romanian home prison at one point held a dangerous amount of sway on extremely volatile young minds to a point where one many of his followers did outrageous things to get his attention and started developing parasocial ties with him based on their shared misogyny they started to feel seen by this person they considered worth following into battle these fans were then later manipulated into paying for bogus courses or invitation to join paid chat rooms where the selling point was that they will get to interact with andrew tate in person this is a vicious cycle that is silently destroying millions upon millions of lives and creating a generation susceptible to cult like personalities and con artists and speaking of cult leaders and con artists let's talk about how the largest tech giants of our times are investing billions to make things worth for us for instance meta a forever online reality where you the commodity are being pushed ushered and baited into taking on a virtual existence mark zuckerberg wants all of us to be hooked onto vr headsets further distancing us from even the ones who are in our physical proximity how bad do you think these non personal parasocial relationships will get if you could virtually sit on the same table as your celebrity crush and have a virtual mukbang you'll have to pay meta for access of course because that's the idea detach the audience from the real get them hooked onto virtual and then charge them to stay there only fans is another such phenomenon this paid private social platform clocked over 210 million subscribers in july 23 now don't get of confused with the traditional adult websites oh no no this is something different only fans is used primarily for adult oriented content that comes directly from the creators to the paying patrons this is as adjacent to sex work as it can be in a virtual setting as it is gender agnostic So if you get to be intimate and play out aspects of yourself reserved previously only for and with a physical partner why would you make any effort to ever take the pain to wash up look good grow a personality to try and attract a real human being you won't the effort versus gratification curve is completely askew when compared what was biologically supposed to bond you to your partner is now a transaction Can I scare you a bit more? Do you know about Replica? It's a fast-growing app that hold for applause is an AI-generated companion that is with you 24/7. This is the gamification of loneliness. You can spend money to buy virtual clothes for your virtual companion. You can pay your way into more prompts, more voices, more faces, more body types. In fact, you can now pay your way into adult conversations with those bots. Black Mirror clearly failed to deliver its message because there are many more such services cropping up that are replicas of a replica and they all seem to have found enough lost souls to come find solace in a machine while the world passes them by. I confess that I am susceptible to doomsday tales and conspiracy theories. 
But if this doesn't seem dystopian to you, then we are in deep, deep troubles. We might never go back to old ways. We seldom do. But there might still be some lines we can draw for ourselves and the ones around us. Top of which is to get once in a while, go out, observe people and the world around you. It will help with your vitamin D efficiency and get your brain some much needed rest. Actively seek out authentic connections. Spend some time with family and friends. Engage in face-to-face -face conversations and participate in activities that bring people together. Remember, real bonds are built through shared experiences and genuine interactions. As social media keeps changing how we connect, we need to think about one-sided online friendships. Always remember, loneliness comes from inability to connect. But it also is something you can easily overcome if you start making small changes in your life and work towards them. Like, share and subscribe. Do it for the algorithm. Do it.